Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Isidro Sanchez. I'm going to present on behalf of my colleagues, Joan Obrega, Raul Campillo, and Paulo Novoa. The title of the presentation is Numerical Estimation of Pill Strength of Adhesive Joints uh, via the Floating Roller, roller Pill Test. This work was done uh, in the Polytechnic, Polytechnic of Porto, in the School of Engineering, and at INEG in Porto, Portugal. The outline of the presentation is uh, introduction, objectives, experimental testing, numerical analysis, and conclusions. Adhesive bonding allows uh, the assembly of dissimilar materials. With the development of non-metallic materials, this has become more employed in manufacturing. It's well known that adhesive joints are stronger in, when loaded in shear than when loaded in peel. Hence, uh, the former is the preferred loading mode. However, applications like those in the aircraft industry, for example, here, or maritime industry, require uh, uh, joints loaded mostly in peel. In consequence, the peel behavior and peel strength uh, for the required substrate and adhesive combination have to be determined. The characterization of the peel behavior of the adhesive joint uh, can be obtained through uh, one of several experimental tests. In this case, we are focusing on the uh, floating roller peel test, which is standardized uh, both in the STM and the ISO. On the other hand, a numerical modeling of one of the joints allows for uh, predicting mechanical behavior of the joint. However, uh, and the experimental data indicate that bending of the thick adherent has also an effect in the pill strength. The current modeling techniques or current uh, modeling methodologies doesn't take uh, in account that effect. So in this work, we aim to experimentally characterize one epoxy-based ductile adhesive, the Aralde 2015, and develop a numerical methodology to predict the peel strength of these joints uh, using experimental data from the literature obtained from bulk and task test or sick adherent shear test, employing the finite element method and quasi-ipsilon modeling. So starting with the uh, experimental uh, testing, we use the adhesive Daral Dye 2015 which mechanical properties are obtained, uh, were obtained uh, previously, and they are already available in the literature. Uh, tensile properties were obtained using the bulk test and following the appropriate standards, and the shear properties were obtained using the thick adherent shear test. In the case of the substrates, uh, we are following the ASTM uh, B5167 standard, so the uh, adherents were cut from aluminum sheet. The material was from the series 6000. And the dimensions are shown in the screen. The specimens were uh, manufactured or fabricated following the standard uh, practices for uh, these applications. So uh, sanding, uh, bonding, and these, one, uh, once the specimens were uh, fabricated, they were uh, left to cure for a week. Then we tested uh, each one of the specimens using a universal testing machine with a 10 kilonewton uh, load cell at room temperature uh, with a testing speed of 125 millimeters per minute. And they were tested until failure, as shown in the little uh, video or GIF uh, in the screen. We can see the behavior of the joint, of the joint during the test, which is when, uh, what we want to replicate with the model. Here we have the results from the experimental test. We can see that we have a good agreement between the four cases tested for this adhesive, uh, although one of them is slightly higher, but uh, overall they are quite similar. The numerical test, uh, the numerical modeling in this case, 
follow uh, this summarized methodology, which is will, which will be explained in the following slides. First, we create the geometry following the standard, uh, as mentioned before. Here, as uh, we saw in the video before, the angle of the substrate changes through the test. So for that reason, we consider the two floating rollers and the center of rotation. We align the flexible adherent with the center of rotation of the rollers. And then we model the whole geometry following these constraints. Then the rollers were constrained to the center of rotation using the elements as well. The position between the two rollers uh, was kept using another beam connector. Therefore, it will represent the actual uh, testing device used. In addition, contact, uh, contacts were defined between the lower face of the flexible adherent and the left uh, roller, and the lower face of the rigid adherent and the right roller. For the mesh, uh, this was interesting. We use uh, three different uh, element types. First, we use cohesive elements in the bond line or in the adhesive layer because we're interested in obtaining the joint strength. So cohesive zone modeling is a good approach for that. For the flexible adherent, which is the one who is uh, deforming through all the tests, we use a uh, four node solid elements. And for the rigid uh, adherent, we use a combination of three node and four node uh, solid elements. In this case, we kept uh, a small element size close to the boundaries uh, of the adhesive layer and where the right roller contact the substrate. In the top part, uh, we use a coarser mesh to save some computational time. The boundary conditions represent those uh, imposed in the te experimental testing as shown in the figure. And here we have a um, the force displacement curve from the numerical uh, test. This is for one particular adhesive. We did, we did this for a few, uh, for a four adhesives in total. But uh, we can see that in this case, we have a slight uh, slope that could, that can be attributed to the way the loading conditions were imposed. However, we can see that the mean value is around 2.8 Newton per millimeter. What happened if we compare this with the, with the data provided by the manufacturer? We have um, a slight under prediction. Uh, the manufacturer data say that is uh, four Newton per millimeter following uh, the same standard, the STM. However, we should take in account that first, manufacturer data is not always available. Second, or numerical, uh, technique or this uh, approach was used, uh, was done using data from literature that was obtained at, the, at, a, at a different testing speed. So that can uh, uh, justify the difference in the prediction. So in conclusion, we got uh, a good uh, agreement or a good repeatability in the experimental data. In all cases, the fracture, the failure of the specimen were uh, had a quasi failure indicating that the adhesive layer failed as it should, uh, as it should. Regarding the numerical uh, methodology, we got a um, conservative prediction of the pill strength of the joint, uh, slightly below the one uh, published by the manufacturer. However, it follows the same uh, trend that the experimental data gathered by us. And we have in account that the material properties used correspond to a different strain rate than those uh, from the manufacturer. But mm -hmm. uh, despite this, we can uh, say that the proposed methodology can uh, provide a conservative prediction of pill strength, and it can be done uh, using already available data for uh, different adhesive data and different substrate uh, materials. So it's, uh, it can be a good uh, approach for, for the research. 
from my side to say everything. If there is any question.